M6 through 9 by yourself because I'll be I'll be knackered. <laughs> I'll be hoping so. for a clean 5-0. <laughs> you got a you got a nice uh rest so I don't think uh you're telling me the facts right now. Yeah, that's true actually. That's very true. So yeah, coming into this draft, um, yeah, Cedic definitely the underdog here. I would say, you know, they lost in the upper bracket um, final before, but um, no reason they can't go through and win this. Um, they've looked better, I think, when they've picked Armes Hero earlier on in the draft, when he gets that nice win condition Hero early. And they have this pick at the, in the first phase now, uh, sorry, the end of the first phase, so they can pick their core Hero then if they want. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, you know, use these three bands in the second phase of Banning to, to try and protect it. And we'll see if they do end up doing that. And this is very different from what we've been seeing so far. But there's the TV. I mean, that was very fast into that one. Uris getting the TV for himself immediately. And I was going to say it's really different from what we've been seeing because we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, I, when was the last time we saw Clockwork as that first pick? It's normally like your Mars or your Phoenix. Um, it's been that way a lot, actually. And now they go Clockwork Morph. So... A lot of the teams that we saw not performing well, I feel like, didn't pick their one position early on. And now we're seeing it be what every team is doing, or at least what winning teams are doing. And both these teams well, have been winning. So We have to remember in the upper bracket final before, Carablade won all three games. And oh, God. So, Don't even. <laughs> you know, it was not surprising that coming into the final, this is the hero that both teams won. <laughs> Um, and I love that Vici get their shaker, even if it has, if it has to play against the clock. I feel feel like uh, PYW's been doing really well on this. So mm. um, I'm now looking to see... Yeah, I, I think these hard supports are the big ones that I would look out for personally. You know, we've seen the Shadow Demon and Oracle all the time. Uh, you know, especially Oracle, we've seen some amazing performances. So uh, I'm wondering, going into the second phase here, you know, clock's probably going to be the five, you would assume. Mm-hmm. Um, for Super, who's been playing that a lot. But Vici, but, what do they want to pair with their Terrorblade to keep it alive? Yeah. I, I will say, though, we did see ISRF play that Clockwork. Mm. Um, and he played it really well in that RNG series, I thought. Uh, or in, Yeah, in that RNG series. So I'm interested to see if they put him on it again here. No, like, I, I wouldn't be too surprised. I don't think it's set in stone that it's going to be this five position just yet. Uh, no, not... Especially with a uh, potential maybe James Shadow Shaman. Potentially. Like that's been his yeah. go-to. So they, but... they do need some burst damage, right, to deal with the TB. Um, in, I think it was the, the first game of the series yesterday, they picked Zeus against TB, and I was saying that, you know, we'd seen Zeus already, and it actually didn't look that great. Mm-hmm. But XM had a really good Zeus performance, um, so that might be something that they look to go to again. You know, we also saw, SRF, <laughs> also saw SRF play Sand King. Mm-hmm. Um, up against the TB, which I think was something that they they valued quite highly. So and they go to the Void Spirit here for XM, most likely. Um, I I feel like every time we cover this region and we see Void Spirit, like it's ninety nine percent of the time it's in that mid position. But it's like Jin Q has just put this doubt in my head that maybe it could be a four position Void Spirit um, coming in from CDC. Not that I think it will be, but there's always that shred of uh, maybe it'll swap up a little bit. Is it not a really good puck game now? Hmm. Up against Morphling and Void Spirit? Like, they, they don't have any hard catch either. And Ori loves that hero. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I wonder what they want to pick here. They go to the Nature's Prophet, and that could be your off. I would say it's probably either Yang or DY's hero. I mean, I, I would assume it's Yang's because mm-hmm. if it is position five clock, it lanes really well up against that as well. Hmm. Um, so that would give the inclination that they've gone their one three four so far for Vici, where CDC. I think things are kind of open. And there's that Sand King you were talking about yes. that until yesterday hadn't seen a, a, a game, and and there's your puck, Mo man. I don't need to be here. I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to... Actually, I, I would show off that I'm just wearing shorts and I'm not fully uh, dressed up right now, so I don't want to give away the illusion. Um, so DK getting banned. But yeah, S- SK coming in here, I, it, it seems like the right pick. We haven't seen it at all, and I'm, I'm still kind of curious as to why teams were just kind of avoiding it because it wasn't getting banned well, and it wasn't getting picked. 
I think as the patch goes on, though, and teams start to figure out what heroes are starting to get more popular, like, I think Sanking does really well against this Terrorblade. Like, you can level Corsic Finale as well early on if you want to, and you have that ability to just, like, push him out the lane really early. Um, and there, it, I mean, it could be a Nature's Prophet 5. I'm not mm -hmm. 100% against it, but I'd be interested to see what Vici decide to do about this. Like, is there something that they see that can really punish the Sanking and try and help their Terrorblade farm? You know, maybe... Oh, I was going to say Bane, it just got banned. Uh, hmm. What about, like, my tree's pretty bad. Ogres doesn't look mm. great. Would they think about going into the Lich? I think Lich is potential, yeah. But the problem is, like, they, they don't have a huge amount of physical damage on C-Deck, so the Lich kind of loses value. Mm -hmm. I feel like Maybe even, like, an AA... Versus. Or something Ooh, up I'm against the that. morph. But then they. I guess they don't lack stuns. They have Puck Earthshaker. Hmm. Ah, hmm. I mean, they kind of do. You're relying on just Fissure and or Dream Coil. Like, Dream Coil is not the longest because level one, it's what, 70 seconds and 65 and 60? It's not that high of a cooldown, but I feel like you still want one more stun, right? Kind of, but I mean, Shakers, they can put between them for a lot of control, and you're probably going to go like Vessel on Yang and stuff as well, so. Uh, hmm. Could take a page out of Puppy's book and put Puck 5 as well, that sounds fun. Um, be the worst thing in the world? I'm trying to think. The like... only thing I don't like is that Nature. Yeah, like Nature's Prophet doesn't lane up that massively well against Morph because he has such high armor. So I'm wondering whether they want to pick the Nature's Prophet as the 5 now and pick a different. Three, if they feel like there's something that can really punish. Could, Maybe like Underlord I mean, what, or something. Yeah, I was just... Alright. I was going to get there. Or like, it was in my head, it just didn't get out of my mouth quick <laughs> enough. What about like Slardar as well? Yeah, I mean that minus armor, definitely a big one to think about. Uh, it gives you control, exactly what you want. Blink Initiator. I feel like that works. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Is this not doesn't... to band as well? No, uh, it's not. No. And the thing about the sword art, too, more of the thing I think about it, he doesn't necessarily need to be going into the Blink Dagger immediately. You've got an Earthshaker who could... He's going to be probably going Blink Dagger first item, so if you're, you know, if you're looking... And you've got mobility from the Puck, too, so you can initiate with the the Puck, with Dream Coil and everything. You oh, don't need the... that Blink Dagger first item. Uh, Disruptor is banned. I was lying. Oh, it's uh, to the left of the Bane. Yeah, you got it. And there's the lich, so it ends up being the lich that we originally came up with. Um, I mean, the lich is like the safest one because it's the best in lane, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think as the game goes on, like Frost Shield's never bad, but you know, it, it's just the safe pick. And it, gives, it does give him more catch as well, to be fair, with the Sinister Gaze. Ooh. So they go Skyrath Mage, which we've seen be successful at times. I'm not sure it will be here, but at the same time, you do have the cogs with the Mystic Flare combo, so you're going to need four staffs. You're going to need ways out for Vici. Uh, make sure you don't get caught in that combo. Yeah, they need four staffs. It's also the Sanking, though, as well, with like mm -hmm. Blink Stun, uh, Mystic Flare on top. And the Silence is really good against Puck as well. I'd be really surprised if Ori didn't go Yules first. Um, I think, you know, Voice Spirits are going to be going like Orchid or. Um, Ags as well, so you kind of need the purge for that. Hmm. Kind of like the CDC lineup with that Skyrath, but uh, it's hard to bet against TB. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, oh, no, they have Morphling though. I, just th I think Ori's going to go crazy on Puck this game. I, I think it's a really good Puck game. Um, I think Sky's the only real hero that can deal with him. Like with this silence, and even then he gets yours. Mm -hmm. Like there's no good stuns. Well, there's no good stuns apart from like a sanking burrow strike. And can they kill Puck in a burrow strike duration? I don't think the answer is yes. I think one of the things though with Puck is just can XM control him? Mm. Sometimes it like we see void spirits who can kind of keep up, but it's very difficult. I think Puck was fine in that lane. Like Puck is yeah. hard. 
You uh, you bully XM really hard. Like, I think Ori's just a, a really strong laner as well. We've been seeing loads of good things from him this tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the orchestra hits versus the moves again. This is what they did their previous series, right? I think so, yeah. Just went back and forth. I wish I knew what that one meant. Yeah. <laughs> PYW with the highest battle pass. I love that PYW's name is just Neil. <laughs> In game. Uh, Puck fake put a ward down mid, by the way. I think he was trying to make sure that, see if he could do it in vision as well. Like, pretend to have put one down. Mm hmm. Uh, and because uh, September does have a. Uh, sorry, not September. Victoria does have a. 30 seconds. Oh, um, century on clockwork. I was struggling to find my words there. <laughs> First game of the day, Ma. Yeah, he, f he saw where this, the observer was going to be placed. Like, he was sitting on the high ground there and saw XM walking back on the Void Spirit. Oh, PYW. What a gamer. So how's this going to match up? TV bottom. Yang is on this profit. The one thing I like about Vici's lineup, too, or not the one thing, there's many things I like about the lineup. Like, I think <laughs> Yang plays... Uh, in such a style that I think he'll really transition into that third core quite well. Yeah, for sure. And um, like all three of their cores scale okay going into the late game, right? Like Puck still does all right. It's not amazing, but I mean the fact they have like the semi core in the off lane is is really helpful. Whereas Sanking, like Sanking and Voice are both like these tempo controllers, and they mm -hmm. they kind of all in on the um, Ooh, the morphling in the late by. game. I know that that statement sounds ridiculous. He's going to transition into that third core well, but you know, I think more of a damage dealer with this yeah. uh, with this nature's profit is more what I mean. And he'll probably go orchid first, I imagine. Yeah, that or he's. I mean, he's got the blight stone. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going deso first. But I, I've been liking the orchid. It seems like orchid's just such a prioritized item at the moment. And like, what does Clockwork do in this lane up against the trees? Like, they, they just bully him so much. Solid Fissure. He took Cox at one. That's an interesting one, which means Yang's not really in much trouble in this lane. At least for now. I see so I've taken a lot of damage. Weave Eurus went meta level one, Conjure Image level two. Except it's getting really bullied in the mid lane, though. Ooh, SRF might just die here. Has to burrow strike away. I mean, he's got a minuscule amount of health. Okay. XM's getting bullied pretty hard, too, over mid. Like, this is... Look at the HP of the whole Dire team. Yeah, so <laughs> far, so good for VG. That's for sure. No, no, no. God damn. <laughs> I was just funny to see at the top that, like, they were all just losing HP at the same time. And this, yeah, this sanking early on does not have a, a great time. But like, as more levels come through, the sanking's going to be fine. It's just, this, this is the power of the Lich that we were saying. Like, it, it's not the greatest hero later on, but it's the safest in the fact that it uh, makes your lane as easy as possible. I mean, it certainly is going to feel pretty good when you've got Frost Shield level 4. Has it? Has the build been 1-4-1 one one at times? Are they um, just trying to play aggressive with that Frost Shield, or has it been like 2 4 1? Uh, I would put a second point in over at least. Uh, sometimes we don't see the Sinister Gaze leveled until a little bit later on. If you, you can go like 2 3 0 if you really want to, but mm -hmm. I think you end up going like 2 4 4. Because I know we've seen uh, like a 1 1 1 start. Look at Ori 17 and 5, and XM is 17 and 2. So not too far behind where Uri is, just a lot of harassment, and he's got the bottle, so the net worths are staying pretty even, because sometimes you'll just see mids, like, just 
buy all this regen and despite them staying with it in terms of CS and and everything, they're behind because they've spent so much of their gold on just racking up regen. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering here, this four minute rune I think is really important if both teams can try and secure it. Like the, um, th this active rune could prove really, uh, tower to attack. make this lane really one-sided either way. Armay's starting to really struggle up in this top lane as well. Yang doing a great job. And TP mid from the Earthshaker. So PYW is coming over. He'll look for the Fissure. He'll grab it. Illusory Orb. But the rune's bottom for James. They're doing a lot of damage here on the XM. He doesn't have another Fissure for 14 seconds. Aether Remnant pulls in the puck, which means XM will pick up this regen rune. However, Resonant Pulse chases on. They really want to stay on him. And he pops the regen and it immediately gets stopped. So. PYW is going to have that Fissure to lock him down and get the first blood for Ori. Ori in some trouble, but has some help here from DY. So all will be okay, and first blood's there for Vici. I mean, that's massive. That, that regen room really could have changed it up for him, but so, I almost think he the, might have wanted to just hold it, die, and come back with it. No, so the, the problem I have is he used the, um, the Resonant Pulse, and the regen keeps going if you don't take damage. Of like magical damage because even if they hit you because it's getting absorbed by the shield your region rune keeps going so i don't know whether puck was just holding the silence for the region rune or what but I'll take your tribute. i think if he'd have just cast the region rune as soon as he cast the shield i think he would have been okay but difficult to say which coming from base to mid fill up that bottle you think they're ever going to change that uh, no, I don't think so. He's got Dream Coil. This could be really bad for XM. It actually lands on a two heroes, and they got PYW coming from the back. He snaps the Dream Coil. Aether, I mean, he's holding the Fissure. XM will finally <laughs> die. I think maybe he could have landed on both. But for a second, PYW what? might just pay for the fact that he was being greedy <laughs> with that Fissure. Well, he wasn't being greedy. There was a clockwork that caught him with battery salt, so he couldn't cast it. Like it, was, it was constantly getting cancelled over and over again. So that's why it came out so late in the fight. Did he use battery assault? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. All right, because it's 22 second cooldown. He's looking like he's going to die here. I didn't see it on cooldown, so I wasn't sure. Oh, PYW's absolutely loving this game. That was yeah. No and they're just, they're just winning all three lanes at the moment. Like, there's a 1k net worth advantage already for Vici. Like XM's yeah, level was... five, or he's level six. There's Coil up again soon, which he's <laughs> probably looking to yeah. try and get another kill before Void Spirit gets six himself. Oh, yeah, there you go. He'll, he'll get it there though. I was thinking the same exact thing. Like, what if he gets this six before he does, and all of a sudden Dream Coil comes in, but he doesn't have that second hero. He doesn't have that Earthshaker with him again. Earthshaker's actually just standing right under a ward. Dyer's structures are fortified. Yeah, super trying to not give the uh I keep saying I keep saying super. Dyer's top tower is It's not super, it's Victoria, isn't it? Because they both have the the Chinese names tagged up. Yeah. So I keep getting them yeah. confused. <laughs> uh look at Yang here pushing in with the catapult wave though. This tower's just dying. Dyer's top tower. Super's is Super's on RNG. Oh dude, this this tower's dead. And this morph's just getting forced back. Dyer's like Yang gets the tower, he continues to stay aggressive. He's going into the urn first. Oh yeah. He's got okay. treads and like he's set. Oh, I was gonna say, of course he's not going orchid. Like they, they want the vessel for the morphling. That makes perfect sense. Well, he could do that after. Sinister gaze and caught oh. in the agi. Ame. Oh dear. Hit him with those orchestra hits. Yeah, great gaze by uh, Lich. Took the early point at level 4. And the uh, thing is that like, that doesn't even cost you the Dream Coil, so Ori can still play aggressive. Yeah, and if they can start pushing this mid lane as well, like Yang can connect on the Nature's Prophet if he really wants There's to. There's three heroes coming over toward... He's going to hit this Fissure on all three. And they still refill the bottle for Axum. I thought for a second Ori would want to go in, but he doesn't actually have any more help, so risky nonetheless. Yeah, and you'll notice that Ori on this puck is maxing the silence instead of the orb first, which is really mm -hmm. important when you play up against these mobile heroes like uh, Avoid Spirit and Morph, just to stop them from being able to jump away for as long as possible. 
Because like you can change stun the Dream Coil and the Waning Rift after one after the other. There's a Waning Rift, got the Silence Clockwork nearby. The whole time too, like, look at TV's CS. He is just free farming. Yeah, we haven't even talked about the Terror Blade actually. No, That's not at scary. all, because all, everything's gone. Yeah, yeah. I, when that happens in the game that you're playing, when you're like, didn't they have a this? And you're like, oh no. Like, that's happening right now. We haven't spoken about him since probably minute two. And all of a sudden, he's sitting top of the net worth. And for a lot of the TB games that we've seen, normally we'll see a TB back up into the jungle and allow someone else to get the lane. But if, when it's going this well and the rest of your team is fighting and winning, do you really even need to? My favorite one at the moment is AM and Ursa, the two that I forget they have. And then, like, because Ursa just builds Battle Fury and he comes up the jungle and he's got, like, another three items. And you're like, oh, never mind. I hear a farm so quickly with Battle Fury. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Okay, he did, yeah. I took a look at that replay. He did get that battery assault off. I just didn't see it. I didn't hear it either. Uh, you know, this is why I'm here, though. I, I catch the little things on the side. You do the big bits. I feel like you're doing the big bits by breaking things down. Yeah, you just have to shout. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy. The seeds of fortune. Next, I'm getting another rune. He's going axe first. Not into the Yules. Deciding he wants that si or double silence. I still think that's kind of broken. I don't mm -hmm. mind that it silences. I think the two charges is kind of a lot. I think that hero would be awful, though. Like, it's, it's a lot of gold. It's all, yeah, it is. It, it's 4,200 gold, so it has to be pretty good. And things kind of quiet down, but I think Vici are okay with this. With the small lead that they've gained for themselves in the first 10 minutes, like, Yuris is going to continue to farm. He's just about got his Yasha. Warrior he comes over bottom, and now they've got... The Dream Coil into the Chain Frost goes back, and these are lucky bounces. Jesus! SRF's dead. James in some trouble. They got the Silence out onto the Lich. They'll bring XM over. Aether Remnant locks him up. James on the run. One more shot will get the kill, but the Arcane Bolt comes in to kill off Yang with the help of XM. They're thinking about reinitiating. They'll throw an Illusory Orb out, but it won't get any CS. Yeah, that's an okay fight, though, because again, at the same time, like, look mid, like, the TV's just free farming away. They're really struggling to deal with him. Just trying to push the tower down. Um, or he has Blink now as well, pretty much, after that kill. Like, he's 100 gold away. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, mid, they're pressuring the mid-tier one. The SRF comes over with Victoria, who is level 6, so he does have hook shot. Oh, he actually went Veil on Sanking. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, Gules. Oh, Ori, Ori? in some trouble. Astral Step, waning Rift, but... I push we'll end up dead. Ever further towards my own ends. Or are you getting caught out? And he did buy out on that, uh, on the blink dagger. They need to give uh, PYW some farm priority here, though. Like on the shaker, I think. Like he's doing okay, but I'd really like to see him just get this this space, you know. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Shot. Used on the Lich, and they're going to have the silence, so they'll get the control for this kill with the Mystic Flare. I'm not certain that's entirely worth it. Now the Fissure comes in perfectly. Victoria's locked up, and he's dead. Yang comes in from the side, and... Ooh, Courier? Courier with a lot on it. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. If that had died, that would have been pretty significant. Yeah, that'd have been a big disaster, actually, if I died. Right, also, Ori has the blink now. So, it's going to be coming out on the courier. Let's see if they can make, like, a smoke play or something, potentially. Uh, PYW does have one on him. Do you want to mention there is a TB in this Radiant's game? Middle tower no. Is under <laughs> well, we seem to just be I mean, not talking about him, but he is farming up a storm. The big thing for me is that this uh, Yang Nature's Prophet almost has a vessel as well. And he, yeah, look, there you go. He could just come out on the courier. And now this Morphling, because he has no purge at the moment, actually has to be super scared. You know, all of a sudden, if he gets caught in a coil with uh, a vessel charge on him, like, he's going to struggle to survive. 
So SRF just sandstorms on the side, and this isn't really doing anything for him. They'll place another Sentry Ward down, refreshing the one that they have mid and giving them a little bit of vision to the right in the sandstorm. But they take the tier one, and now what's to stop them from invading the jungle? There's not really much at the moment. Uh, question for me, when's Eurus going to be building Beekeeper this game? Um, oh, hang on, bot lane. I think Nature's Prophet's in... Uh, yeah, he's in no man's land a bit here. There is a clockwork with a hook shot, so he has to be a little bit worried. He's, yeah, he's, he's doing a good job with away. these treants. Oh, Ooh. that Aether Remnant had hit. That would have been pretty good for him. Of night and me. This puck has kind of fallen off though. Like he rotated bot and his blink took like an extra two minutes when he was 200 gold off. Mm -hmm. And now they like, because the blink got delayed, like they've missed a, a minute or two of a window where they could have been, you know, making moves around the map. Dyer's top tower is under attack. PYW, he's going for his blink dagger. You're just a couple of hundreds of gold off from getting a Manta style for the TB. I don't know if he needs BKB right after. I guess he could start saving for the next item, get a feel for where they are in the fight, but... I mean, it's a really good Skadi game as well. The problem is they just have more Void Spirit, Sand King, Sky, though. Like, it's all magic damage, so it depends how greedy he's feeling. I, I think, you know, depending how they see the game going, maybe they th they're happy that the TB's just able to farm his second item and then towards the BKB as well. But it's really difficult for him to take fights until he has the BKB. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he's got Skadi queued up next. I think that most, you know, Zivivici probably happy to slow the tempo of the game down a bit here. The problem is now you've got Yang who's built Vessel first and Puck who's built Blink first. On the Lich once again. And I'll get the kill. I... That was weird. Mystic Flare didn't even show on my screen. You get the Silence and the Dream Core coming through onto the clockwork. Victoria in trouble. And Eurus comes over and just one push gets the kill. Typical carry fight contribution. <laughs> Yeah, very much so. Oh, yeah, that was really weird. I didn't get Mystic Flare on my screen. Yeah, I don't get it either. Every time, even my pubs, in casts, I can never see Mystic Flare for some reason. It's usually pretty obvious, too. And I know some people have that bug and some people don't, so I don't know what the problem is. Yang, meanwhile, he's going uh, into a pipe. So he's going pipe next and Blink Dagger and just two gold for the Earthshaker. So they've got the Blink Dagger now on the puck and the Earthshaker. Their team fight really just excels. Uh, you know, Dream Coil under the Echo Slime seems like such a uh, dirty combo. I mean, the Vestal pipe build is good. Like, it's just this, like you say, just a uh, big team fight uh, advantage, like, big utility build. I still wouldn't mind seeing him go Orchid at some point in this game. But he might want, like, Solar Crest or something afterwards instead as well. Yeah. I was a little surprised. Just, uh, you know, I thought he might go Deso, Orchid, but obviously the Spirit Vessel makes a lot of sense. Um, just wondering what he's going to do afterwards. And. Meanwhile, here, Morphling's gotten drums into the Morbid Mask and looking for an E-Blade. But a long ways off that Eagle song. Okay, so here's the axe for the uh, Void Spirit here on XM. Now, I'm assuming he wants to go and look for a pick-off, but the problem is, like, Veach is just 5 manning at the moment in the top lane. Uh, I don't know who they're going to be able to find. Oof, meta. Really committing for the tower. I don't know if Ami wants to come into this. I don't think they know that the Earthshaker they, has this Blink Dagger either, so... They need to defend their... really poorly. They need to defend their Tier 2s, though, to stop them from taking out posts before the 20-minute mark, so... Like, they have to bring the numbers over. Um, he's going E-Blade on Morph as well, which I think is fine. Just so I wonder how quickly it's going to be, because it does not feel like it's going that well. Morphling's such a ridiculous... It looks so stupid when it has the TB form. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. That's the. Feels like when Rubik gets like Elder Dragon. Oh, Sam, top blink lane. echo, and there's the fissure. They get the kill on Ame, and there's the blink reveal on the Earth Shaker. So it's exactly what I was talking about. They didn't know that he had that blink dagger, and they just get a little bit too comfortable pushing forward. I think that's the biggest kill on the map. 
Like, mm. uh, from now onwards in the game. Uh, yeah, Void Split before he got his axe probably was, but... Now that, yeah, every time you kill this Morphling, like, it, it shuts CDX game, yeah, CDX game down so much because he's the only really uh, scaling potential hero on their team. And, like, we've said that um, Vici, they don't, they just want to, you know, carry on farming up. Like, this, this uh, TB's going Scardy first, he's not even going BKB, so they're quite happy to just keep extending this game a little bit here. And they find uh, Victoria. Yeah, looks like they're going to get another one. Spear Vessel Charge used. Epicenter, though, coming in, and they're trying to get a kill here on a POIW or DUI. They don't get it. Mystic Flare is down. Finally, they'll finish off the Earthshaker, but here comes Ori with the Frostbust. They'll take out SRF. James falls to Yang, and it's a three for one in the favor of Vici. All of a sudden, he's got two extra Spear Vessel Charges. It's a 5k lead for Vici, and TB pushing closer and closer to that Scotty. Yeah, the voice but just wasn't in the fight, unfortunately. I think if he was there, then they probably killed the TB as well. Because he got down to about half HP, and this voice but has a lot of burst damage. And this is the, these are the kind of timings that you have to abuse if you're C-Deck. Because otherwise, what's going to happen is this game goes later and later. And, like, the TB and the Nature's Prophet are scaling really well. And your Morphling isn't. So, like, if you compare the net worth of the TB to the Morphling, Vici are in Radiant's such a good position at the moment. Is under attack. Like, that's, that's where a lot of the advantage comes from. And they get this outpost before the 20 minute mark, so all that defense goes for naught. Oh, I say that. I'll take your tribute. And they're gonna get it back. With seconds to spare, I spoke too soon. I thought when the patch notes dropped, by the way, that it meant that you couldn't take over your outpost until you, you couldn't, couldn't take any outpost until you took the two. Again, Dream Coil down, Chain oh. Frost in. Dy gets the kill on the Ame, and yeah, you got your outpost back, but you lose your Morphling once more, and he is just getting slowed down again and again and again from picking up that E Blade, and eventually it's going to come, and I think it's just going to be able to what pop a support, and that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that play, they get the outpost, they get all the XP, but they lose their morph. Carry players everywhere in tears, but all the support players are clapping their hands, rejoicing at that. Like, hell yeah, get that XP. Like, <laughs> Mid lane, puck. Silence, but yeah, he's already got his Yules, he's going Ags next. Good hook shot, so should still get this kill. Again, I don't see the Mystic Flare, but I assumed I, I heard it, so must have been right on top of him. Yeah, uh, he did. I don't know why he blinked in there, Onori. That was pretty... Pretty brave. He's getting ambitious. It's just a little bit sloppy, you know. There's just no need. What's Clock going for now? He has 1.1k. Is he going for a vessel of his own? I feel like he doesn't need it. Could he be going Orchid? I mean, he could. I mean, it's quite expensive, though, for a POS 5 Clock to be building. Like, yeah. it, it comes out so late. Because by the time he gets Orchid, TB's going to have BKB. Like, that's just how much farm priority they're both being given. Looks like they want to smoke mid. Yeah. So. Four-man smoke from Vici. As uh, Yang can be here anytime. Our scanning. Up 7,000 net Dyer's worth. And they're going to start heading towards attack. bottom. If they can find the CDC side, they smoke themselves. And they're smoking with the Morphling who, yeah, he'll just break it. And oh no, if they get Ame, he's still in the scan and he just gets lucky to get out. Although they oh, this might could be, be bad, to engage. Look shy. They might be tricking themselves into going into a fight that they might not be able to handle. And the stun! Oh! Hubbling forward! Echo Slam gets committed to get the kill on SRF. They lose DY and PYW, but the damage coming in from Yuris is way too much. They look over at Ame. Ori right in front of him. He's got the Uzi over in the body blocks. There's the Yules. Ame trying to get a little bit of distance between him and the rest of VT. Oh, but sprout. the Sprout is out with the waveform. And down again goes Ame. They look over at James, the right clicks are in, the silence is there, the kill comes with it, and Yang is now dominating a three for two that is very favorable for Vici. Ame dead again, and he still sits 700 gold away from that, e uh, that eagle song. Oh, Yang on this Nature's Prophet is doing so much work, man. Like, he's just everywhere in the fight. Like, he had so many vessel charges from the early kills that he got involved with as well. And, like, he still has three left because of all these kills he's getting in the fight. Like, he almost has BKB as well, and this we talked about how important these BKB timings are. Like, how did this die side fight into that? It's, it's just all magic damage, and Morphling's even going E-Blade as well. Just more magic damage. 
I assume Yan goes Hex as well after the BKB for just a little bit of extra catch. They're going BKB on the TB now. They'll get the Why kill there on to the Earthshaker. Maxim's got double damage to clean that one up as he's gone into Kaya Sanj. It's not an everyday item for the uh, Void Spirit. Uh, this is what we see a lot of the Chinese players do though. I think they either go like... BKB if they feel like they need it, or they go for this like magic amp build. Because he has the talent at level 20 as well that uh, increases his spell amp. And then they go, yeah, they go for this Dagon as well afterwards, just for like full on burst. But again, it's more magic damage. <laughs> so if each be if each can play around their BKB timings really well, then they'll just pull further and further ahead. You know, first for C deck, it's about trying to kite out the BKB duration so that they can then deal with their damage. Tier 1 tower, bottom gets pressured a little bit. Ori, meanwhile, trying to go into that. Ags, and he is not too far away from it. And that, you know, that also, uh, Eurus, he's close to his BKB. And, and so is Nature's Prophet. There are a couple of big items coming in for Vici in the next few minutes or so. 100%, and I think this Ags on Puck as well is going to be really devastating. Just... Uh, the problem is, like, these really mobile cores hate playing against Dream Core and they can't even itemize for it when it gets the axe. They, they just die in a coil duration. <laughs> How this bounty. A prize. Where is Ame over mid? Finishes off the E Blade. He's got 800 gold. Four staff picked up, though, for the Earthshaker. And then uh, Lich, he's gone Glimmer Cape, he's going into the Force Staff too. Clockwork, did he decide on something? He, Yeah, he's picked up the urn. He had the urn before though. So, but he had, okay, he's going Vessel though, he has got it. He's got the Vit mm. Booster in his backpack. Do it with flare. Axe for Skyrath isn't too far off. I don't know how much difference it makes though when they just buy BKBs. Lich. Ends up dead. Astral Step finishes him off. BKB's been picked up by Yang. And uh, it's also been picked up by Eurus, who's going oh, into the MKB next. Here. This smoke could be really good. I think that's the yeah, for 30 seconds. It's advantageous for them to go for something. Oh, they're going to perfect from both sides. Yeah, they're just going to go and hold the high ground. Under attack. People are just pushing top, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yang could just TP in here and try and take some racks or something, but he needs to save his TP for the fight, really. Dyer's top tower is under attack. He's pushing once again, and I wouldn't be too shocked if Yang went up there, but again, like you said, he needs to save that TP. Good D ward by D ward. Knew they were lurking on that side before, so they're probably going to have dropped a ward in the area. So, Vici. They hit towards Roche, and Eurus is in. We've got Yang with the, uh, the Blightstone, and a little bit of minus armor there. They'll try to get something done, but that is a rocket flare that spots this out. The question is, are CDC going to look to go to this? and try and fight it's, it. Uh, it's the double BKB timing from Vici. Like, this is what they've been waiting for. Now the Rocket Flare comes in again and spots that they're out of the pit. So you gotta assume that he or Vici are moving from the jungle and waning rip. They find themselves the clockwork. But there's the Astral Step forward as well as the Silence. Silence on two of these heroes. The Mystic Flare is down. The Force Step from the Sword Shaker is not enough to stay alive. But get the gun of the UIW. The Chain Frost bouncing around. Hits on the Ame. They finish off James. Aether Remnant locks up the TB. But TB is not going to be pressured any further until Ooh. SRF comes in with Burrow Strike. There's the Manta! Yura is so good! They get the kill on a DY, and they look over at SRF. They'll get the kill on the Sand King, and on the high ground is Ori, who will blink coil. down the low ground, looking over at the Void Spirit. They've got themselves the Silence, as well as the Dream Coil. Placed down on the XM, Aether Remnant pulls him in. Metamorphosis runs out to simulate, trying to get to the high ground. Or is he? He goes on to Ori, and then Astral steps back up high. They're just going to go into the road straight, though. That coil actually lasted next to no time because of the um, the Kaya Sanj on the uh, voice. Is he in trouble? Well, yeah, he might just be dead here. 
Ooh. Well, right clicks more and you would die. Uh, Astro steps away, hook shot out on a Yang with the Evo and Adaptive Strike. But they still don't kill him just yet. He pops the BKB, he'll run away from Victoria, TPing in his Lich. So, uh, I don't know if you saw what happened in the fight before. Around this high ground, you know where he managed to dodge the bro strike, which was insanely yeah. cool, by the way. Or he was just sitting on that cliff where the ward is for the whole fight. Yeah. He accidentally orbed up there. And then I'm pretty sure he just couldn't get down for ages. Because I'm pretty sure they called, killed the Void Spirit earlier on in the fight if he isn't on the cliff. Because he couldn't get within range to use Coil. And unfortunately... Or ETZ. Having some issues. I thought, and then it looked like the meta had run out. One of the illusions went back to normal. But at the end of the day, it could have been a morphling illusion going back. Mm -hmm. They need this big damage item on the TB now. Like, this MKB is so good at the moment, but... Because the, the Scarlet's really nice, like the Mantis really nice, BKB's really nice, it keeps him alive, it keeps him, uh, you know, strong in fights, but he needs that big punch now. And when the MKB comes out, he's going to be a lot stronger. This Morphling E-Blade, though, is, is pretty good. And, like, they're getting their BKB timings lower, which we said is really important. Yangs is down to uh, nine seconds now. I mean, TB still hasn't used his, but, like, yeah, every second counts. Stood and traded. Yeah, it does, but it's also just getting down to nine seconds, considering the fact that they... Oh, oh my uh, God. Did you see that? Himself. He tried, to hook, he tried to hook shot the puck and then they just end up both on the cliff. Yeah, so nine seconds considering the fact that, you know, they're up 10k. So, yeah, you're getting a second off, but will it matter if you're this far behind? Doesn't feel like it. Level is this Dagon? Two? Okay. Surprised they haven't taken another chance at Roche. Or at least try to force that fight. It's really hard to fight into it when they have the vision from the rocket flare, though, and they're sanking as well. They can just blink into the pit and blow everybody up. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, Void Spirit, by the way, has not died in so long, from what I recall. Like, I'm pretty sure he died twice really early on in the game. So like, mm, although he's not, he's right. even though he's struggling to deal with a, bit, a little bit of damage, like he's being an absolute pain in the ass. See if I could find the last time he died. Yeah, it's been a while because they killed him very early. Radiant or scanning. Yeah, he hasn't died since about the seven minute mark. Wow. <laughs> and they smoked up for CDC. They're not in Roach Pit though. Yang's just pushing out bottom. He's going into a Mjolnir, so he's trying to transition into more damage. Eurus, meanwhile, going into the Satanic after finishing off this peak, uh, this MKB. Wrath of Nature doing a lot of damage there on a James and Victoria. It's just they're like both. It's like Mexican standoff, isn't it? Around the Roche pit, really. Yeah. Like, they're just waiting the, for someone to make Dyer's a mistake. Top tower yeah. is under it's, it's a really tough one because if you put one step wrong. Like, the other team could punish you really hard for this. Like, 9k net worth advantage sounds like a lot at this point, but, you know, when there's so much burst potential from C-Deck, like, if they don't pop a BKB on one of their cores, or, like, somebody gets caught by a random stun from the Sanking, they can just, like, all smash their head against them and kill them instantly. They're coming forward with another smoke. SRF, he's been spotted. They've got the waning rift, so he can't throw a strike away. There's a frost bus as well as a sinister gaze. They'll get the kill on SRF, and that's a big one again. Could just go right in Roche. And that's the problem. <laughs> right there. Yeah. When this happens across the river, it, it gives you plenty of opportunity to just back off towards Roche, take control of some objectives, especially being the outpost. 
I think he's going to have is... to buy back here. Yeah. Yeah. They might have to commit though. This is already pretty low. I so they have to set up. This is. I don't think this is good. Yeah. They, they, they might as well just get up the pit. I wonder if CDC try to steal it now. Uh, or at least go for it. Hmm. It's really tough for both teams. Like we said, it's kind of like that standoff going on. And CDC, they're starting to put themselves around the pit. Hoping they can find something. They're just struggling to find that opening. Because Vici are holding the high ground triangle so well. And continuing to farm here, he's just a thousand gold off the Hyperstone, finish off that Mjolnir. And it's so easy and to then... play this kind of game when Nature's Prophet can just TP to the bot lane, push out the lane, and then you can control the other two waves from playing the triangle. Like, they don't have that um, luxury on C deck. Like, they have to just use the Rocket Flare, I guess. Which isn't too bad. Like, at least they can still push the lane out without being there. Boom! There it goes! You've got the Puck Eggs, you've almost got this Satanic on Terrorblade. He picks up the Reaver, has that extra wow. strength. Like he is really farming up a storm here. He he's so far ahead of this Morphling. I feel like I was only just talking a second ago about how he was going to finish his MKB. <laughs> Dagon level three. Dyer's middle tower is under close attack. to Dagon five. Arms for the dead. Dyer's bottom the more and more they attack. sit back, I, I think. Vici just continue to extend their lead. This has been okay for Vici, and every so often they're going to try and poke and prod again to the Roche Pit. Still sitting here at about half health, so they got halfway from it the first time. If they go back into the pit, maybe they can get the other half. But as I say that, CDC are setting up. They are not as far as they were the first time or the second time. They back out of the pit once again, and Vici. Oh, can they just sit stationary like this? Uh, I think like, there's no pressure on them to try and end the game right now, though. I think mm -hmm. like they can wait for the Satanic if they want. Like, there's no there's no pressure because like even if this morph gets scarred, it's not a massive deal. Like in comparison, yes, it's annoying, but like I don't know. I like that he's going Lincoln's on Ori on the puck as well. Like when you're playing against this Sand King, he's the like we said, he's the only stun on their team. So if you can uh, cancel the Blink Burst Strike with the Lincoln's, like they have no control for you anymore, really. Is this a four staff coming in? Yeah. So DY gets his four staff. You've got a four staff available on PYW. He's also trying to pick up Shadow Blade. Morphling continuing to farm. Where's TV in terms of levels? Two levels behind the morph. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Morphling's actually getting close to 25. Back towards Dyer's the pit they go, tower. but they immediately the rocket flare. Oh, finds the vision and oh, they missed the coil on the void oh. spread. That was so close, and the Fisher almost hit as well. Missed that coil, and now it's their turn to fight. Throw strike on Yuris as well as DUI. They've got the silence. They'll start to back off. CDC How's not fully committing. Dyer's I'm amazed DUI lived there. Attack. That's... Dude, this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what He's I want to see? Four staff. I want to see at some point in this game, right? DUI builds an axe, and then Ori... He coils somebody, loads of people right on the edge, and then DY blinks just beyond them and like pulls them all away out of the coil and snaps it. Dude, that's it's gonna be big, I'm telling you. Uh, TB gets an illusionist cape, by the way. Good stuff. You think he's gonna get the gold to do that? Yeah, he's got sure. 1k right now if he wants it, but they managed to get the Aegis. Yeah, they just steal the Aegis. Silence comes in with the TB as well as DY. DY taking a lot of damage from the, oh, the e but as well as the adaptive strike in, in Metamorphosis' is Ame. Looks over at Yuris, they're going to start to trade. Yuris has the Satanic, so he's winning this fight for right now. Chain Frost comes around, bouncing, not doing a lot. 
Misery Orb over. The BKB's been popped by Ame, but it's about to run out. So he'll back off. They got the buyback from GUI, and they've got the Aegis. That's really good for CDC. Vici spending all this time waiting, poking, prodding, and they don't even get it. And it's here for Morphling, which is huge. I can't believe they've managed to sneak that. Like, the, <laughs> I, I cannot believe Vici just let it go. Like... No, Yang bot lane as well might be in a bit of trouble here. Oh gosh, he is uh, being chased by Ame. BKB popped, gets the silence, but Yang, he's just eating this damage and he's straight dead, but Yuris comes over and they pop the okay, Aegis. Okay. That's Although a DD on from the that, though, there are people coming over and it's everybody rotating. The hookshot comes through. Oh, Pearl Strike hits yes, the as well as the TB. Huck's in trouble, TB's in trouble, but they'll get the kill on the James and they'll take out POW and DY. So the supports are gone on the side of Vici. They both back on DY and now Yang as well as POW will buy back themselves. Yang Rage trying to fight with the help of the TB. Ame, waveform, Burrow Strike hits on the Yang as well as the silence coming in from the Resident Pulse. Victoria's been found. The double damage from Yuris doing a lot of damage onto the clockwork. Can they get the kill here? A couple more shots, and they'll finally find a monster kill for Yuris. However, it doesn't become much more fruitful than that. And the buybacks from Yang and PYW now put Vici in a bit of a bad spot. Or he managed to survive just on the side of that fight as well. He managed to get the... Uh, it was like 100 HP or something, and he managed to blink and get a TP away as well. So really close to being an awful fight for Vici. I, was, I really thought the TB was going to die at the start of the fight because he didn't have BKB and they almost blew him up. But, uh, you know, fortunately for him, he managed to uh, get four stuff. I think it was by DY and then get his Satanic off and just allow him to you know, punch people to get his health back. So I hate that TB has an illusion escape. 25 so for Morphling so has that plus three multi-shot adaptive strike. Instead of the wave throwing charges. I mean, if he can kill all the TB illusions, though, it feels pretty good. Oh, magic lamp. It's not what anybody wants on this team, really. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, TB's got the illusionist cape. Puck's gone into the timeless relic. That's right, because Morph has an illusionist cape now as well. So, And he's building Manta already. Maybe, right? Just hear me out with this. Instead of TB having the Illusionist Cape, you give it to the Nature's Prophet because then trees get stronger. Look, at, think of the value. Interesting. Uh, they catch the Fissure. Clock. Looks like they'll get Victoria's Sinister Gaze will hold him close, but the jump in from XM almost killing DY. Now he's in the, in the Dream Coil. Hook shot comes down on a year's when he pops the BKB. The Echo Slam follows it up. They'll get the kill into the Void Spirit, or will they? He silenced for the moment, has the Yules. Ami on the back line. He gets the kill on the DY. They'll finally find the kill on an X, and the Bible comes in front of the Clockwork. And I'm by Morphling. Ame, he needs to be careful. They're going to jump forward. Victoria's right here, but he doesn't have Hook shot for another 24 seconds. The BKB's been popped by the Morphling. James just waiting on the high ground looking for silence. That's only on Illusions. Yuris making his way forward through the cogs. PYW in a little bit too far. SRF gets the to get the kill. Ame's dead. He's got buyback though. And all of a sudden, he'll use it for him and the Void Spirit. XM comes in. He's got himself to jump with the Astral Step. And Yang trying to TP out. They get the kill on James. No Skywrath Mage for 60 seconds. Now the Dream Core follows it up. They get the kill on the Yang. Coin. They take on the Nature's Prophet, but James goes down as does XM. They look over at Victoria. The right hook's coming in from Yuris as well as Ori. Can they get the kill on the Clockwork? They'll look over at Ame, the SRF, Epi Center, right on a Yuris. And the Burrow Strike, the Mantle was too early. They get a kill onto Yuris. Victoria falls. Ori and DY alive, but no buyback from Yang and or PYW. They did use the two buybacks on the cores, though, on um, on the C-Deck side. Like, this um, this Morphling and the Void Spirit both brought back. So, you know, you take one more good fight now for Vici, where you kill either of the cores, and then they're in serious trouble. Because uh, this Puck has Timeless Relic as well. Like, this coil is lasting absolutely for, like, ages. It lasts forever. And they have so, like, this tier one mid-up as well, so it takes ages for um, C-Deck to try and push here to get to the racks. So like, although they take a good fight on C, like overall in terms of the game, Vici come out ahead just because like they they can't push quick enough. They can't like get any objectives from the uh, buybacks that they've used on C deck. Looked like Yuris was a little too preemptive going to that Manta trying to avoid the Burrow strike. I mean, it's, it's so hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, he did it once, and it's like I'm expecting him to do it every single time. <laughs> but that fight puts him and Ori over 25. So. 
you know, the plus 350 winning rift AoE in range, and then you've got TV, who's now in the uh, Metamorphosis attack range. Yeah, I think it's really important that you take that up against the Morphling, though. Like, cause he gets the extra range as well from the meta, so like he, he's able to keep his distance a little bit more than usual on the Morphling when he's uh, trying to lay down the hurt. Doctor in core next puck, TV going into the Abyssal Blade. Uh, Ori had an arcane room that whole fight as well. It was it was quite like he was just everywhere. And he's like, oh, that was quite good. Maybe I should have more cooldown reduction all the time. Please. I'll put Doctor in core. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if that is the mindset. All of a sudden it's like, I, I do like using my skills at a shorter cooldown. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good though. Like, cause you get the voodoo masks now as well, so it's like you get the healing from all your spells. You're just buying out on the abyssal. Okay. Risky, but high risk, high reward. I mean, the only, one, the only reason he died in the last fight is because they used the buybacks on the two cores. Like, he was yeah. there forever. He has 4,100 HP. Like, this guy's huge. And it allows him to have that instant initiation versus the Morphling and the Void Spirit. Uh, Epi. Epi Center? Uh, right? Uh, that's on cooldown. He tried to use it onto Yang. Just BKB TP away. He's almost 25, too. Bounties for the dead. Who, the Sand? Yeah, he is, actually. Yeah. The Sandstorm Slow and Blind is going to be really good against all the TB illusions. I hadn't even thought about that. Because the TB illusions can't BKB. So this mischance is... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, that's, that's quite cool. He's going Hex as well on Sanking, which could be really key. Up against this, like, Puck who's built the Lincoln, so you need the Hex and the Burrow Strike. Would you be sad if he took the 40 region? Yes, I'd be li absolutely livid. Winning Rift, Dream Coil out on SRF. He'll use himself, but this lasts forever. Oh, there's a nullifier. So on the he's profit. still here. And then finally, it runs out, but they've got the silence as well as the nullifier, so uh, they get the kill on SRF, and you might be forced to buy back. However, I say that PYW, he's getting attacked. Uris pops the BKB, they get the kill on this Earth Shaker. He did use Echo Slam in that fight, they didn't find anything with that Yang. It's a bit far forward, so he's forced to pop his BKB, and that BKB now is five seconds. So, it's worth pointing out this nullifier on the Nature's Prophet. He, um, Arme has to be really careful with how he uses his Satanic now, because oh, he's actually disassembling the the um, E-Blade on the Morphling. Oh, did he just... I think he might have just sold it, actually. I don't know. But now he's gone Butterfly instead, which I, I think he really needs. It's all about the right-click war versus the Terror Blade now. Like, this E-Blade's okay, but he needs the raw, like, uh, right click damage potential. Can you disassemble even? I didn't think you could. Maybe you just sold it. I don't know. No, you can. Just look at the. Uh, oh, you SK. can. I did. I've never seen anybody disassemble e blade before. <laughs> Usually, an item that you're trying to take advantage of the entire way through. Oh yeah, because it doesn't have a recipe, does it? I'm pretty sure that's. Is that how it works? Radiance bottom tower yeah, under attack. So spell prism and magic lamp for XM. Ah, uh, oh, I guess it's when his Aeon disc is on cooldown. He just swaps the magic lamp in. Would be my assumption. Ags MKB next for the nature's prophet. Which Aeon disc? Sad it's not the Ags. BKB next for the Earthshaker. Puck is still looking for that Octarine core. But TB saved up 4,200 gold, so he's just skirted in a buyback. Meanwhile, Roche is back up. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Would avoid spirit take. Dissimulate stun, no Radiance surprise, Middle Sand King. Not 25 yet. How close is he? Oh, he's almost there. Illusion. It's so difficult to just go into the pit again, though. Like, it's, it's not fun. Both sides, yeah. And it's off. It'll be interesting. I mean, this rocket flare is going to come through again. 
Yeah, like, are they gonna come over here on C deck? They're not smoked up or anything. Give some true sign. Wrath of Nature. Uh oh, SRF. Throw strike onto the low ground. The Mystic Flare comes in. Oh, he blowed up! Chain Frost, that's gonna bounce around. Hits on a Victoria, now comes back up at XM, now back down, but they've got the Abyss Blade being used by Yuris. They'll look over at this Cockwork. Can they get the kill with the Sinister Gaze? Yes, they'll lock him down and get one. There's a gem on the gun for 80. Gem on the deck. It feels like they're trying to bait out somebody to come grab it with PYW right there. Nobody will, and he'll pick it up himself. TB Illusion's just fighting on the side on the hill. I wonder if they give the Aegis to the Puck here. I guess they do then. Because there's no Clockwork here, so they can't scout it out with Rocket Flare anymore. Roshan has fallen to the radius. So, Aegis picked up for Ori. Yang's taking the cheese as well, but not in his inventory at the moment. This Shaker really needs BKB now as well. BYW's really struggled to like find his way into this game because there's so much like random crap just being thrown around in fights that he struggles to get the Echo off. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower She was for the Sand King and he has gone into the 40% Sandstorm. Thank uh, God. Soul and Blind. Oh! Oh! Ori! Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Searching! I mean, it's, it's what? 60 seconds? Who cares? Might as well use it. Any chance you think you're gonna get something. I really hope Yang builds the Hex on this Nature's Prophet next. Yeah, I mean, maybe he feels like he needs another damage item for himself, but... I don't know. I feel like they're just lacking a tiny little bit of, uh, like, cheap lockdown. Like, instant mm -hmm. initiation. Because they have the Shaker, but... He is... He's struggling to find his openings, like we said. He's actually got AC queued up. Okay. <laughs> and then TB's got Moonshard queued up. TB's got a double damage, dude. <gasps> We're gonna see TB act soon. Yes! He's gonna get to the point where he actually has the gold. <laughs> he's so farmed. Come on, just, just do it. Don't buy the moon shard. That's dumb. Well, he's going for it next, though, now, right? So, you just have to wait 6,000 more gold. And then he'll have it. I mean, he's not got it queued up. But it would be nice. Attack. I mean, what else? Maybe he goes Rapier instead of MKB, actually. Scanning. Me instead of uh, Axe. Yeah, but I mean, like, in its inventory, sorry. Like, he replaces the MKB with a Rapier. Bottom tower has fallen. Just... Go Axe. Dude, you get the Dream Coil, and then you fear them out of the oh Dream Coil. Oh my god. Please. Dude, that's going to win them the game. It's first grade stuff, here. And, the and their DY builds an Axe as well, like we talked about before. And they just pull them away even further. Let's relax. DY oh, they, has like, they fear them away gold. and they, they fear them away, and they pull them in at the same time, and then they just die because their body gets pulled apart. That's the... Dude, I'm so smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ori. Cliffing himself once again. He just likes the view. Phase shift down to four and a half second cooldown now with the Octary. Jeez. Seems good. Dream coil down to 45 Top seconds. Yang. Uh, Yang. Uh, he's gonna die here. And he's dead for 99. He's got buyback. DUI trying to come through. They've got themselves the waiting. Oh, they got the Morphling. Dream Coil. Morphling in trouble. Frost Blast. Chain Frost. They should have the Sinister Gaze with this, but there's the Fissure. SRF trying to find something with the waiting rift. That will silence them up. Yuris goes into the Metamorphosis, and they should be able to catch SRF. They've got themselves the waning rift as well as the Abyssal Blade. They'll take out the Sand King, and they want both the Morphling, though. off laners are gone. Ooh, almost. I'm really surprised PYW didn't commit the Echo to try and get the Morphling. Like, he tried to use the Enchant Totem after the Fisher, and it was too slow. The Morphin got his BKB off. I th honestly thought they could have got him there. 800 gold away from having Axe, but he needs the Axe Blessing, right? Because he doesn't want yeah, to give yeah, up a, a slot. Ori, big oh, science, big man. coil. Sinister Gaze, they've got themselves locked into a bad position here on the CDC. They get the kill into James. They look over at Victoria with the Abyssal Boy being used by Yuris. They have the lockdown to kill the Clockwork. Make it a third. They all do have buyback. Let's see how Vici 
press on as they do still have the Aegis and uh, Yang up in 27. It's so satisfying after the clock dies watching all the cogs die around them as well because they've got so much attack speed. Oh, love that. Regeneration. I think he's going to go rapier on TV instead of the eggs. Nah. Why risk it? You're up 13k. Don't need to do that. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, it's gonna happen! <laughs> Let's go, baby! <laughs> I've never been so happy in my life. Dude, imagine you asking for TB Ags all game, and me ask for, for all tournament, and me asking for Sanking all tournament, and then we get them in the same game! Oh man. Morphic's actually um, level 30. Okay, so he gets the waveform talents as well. He, all his talents are really good, actually. Because I don't know which talent he took at 20, but whichever one he's just received as well is really nice. Of course, a double damage for yours. Dude, cooldown reduction on the Illusionist cape. He's sending that oh, yeah. courier over, dude. Oh my god, he's gonna do it. Oh my god. Is it gonna be at Dream Coil? into the uh, Terror Wave, snaps it, everybody dies. Is that what it's called, Terror Wave? Yes. That's such an awful name. All right, I, don't, I want him to like build the axe now and then just kick it, put it on the floor and kill it. It's like... Oh. Kindred oh my god. This is it. Radiant are what? Scanning. Oh yeah, he has to be meta for it to show. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. My path leads to I hope you guys, like that. Where was it? I hope you guys are ready for this. He just manned to dodge the smoke, by the way, on TB. <laughs> Dude, Yuris is so good at these manta dodges. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna expect this. Oh my god. Terribly, where are you? Dream coil. Alright, he's leashed. They do a lot of damage on the Yang. They've gotten themselves a hook shot. Yuris coming in with a double damage. He's going to move forward. They've gotten themselves a sinister oh, gaze as well as the damage on the X. And they'll get the kill of the Void Spirit. Now, Yuris moving over. There's the Terror Wave. It's on SRF. Echo Slam committed. They'll get the kill of the Sank. He's there for 99 seconds without buyback. Uh, it's a 90 second cooldown. So, that's all we're seeing. That was really good, though. Was, uh, like, he just Victoria sent the Sank flying the in the other direction. He has no yeah. buyback on SRF. Do you know why they won that fight? Terror wave. Yeah, exactly. Radiance middle tower is under attack. By the way, four minutes away from tier five items. Okay, I'd be surprised if the game ended that long now. To be honest, actually no, I would not. Meta's so. got a fourth of the duration, or he doesn't have Aegis anymore. I don't. I, I just feel like if they force us here, like XM has no buyback, right? If he like, if he can has to be forced SRF to buy back into no the game here, and SRF doesn't have buyback either. And I think they can just kill XM again when he respawns with the coil. Well, XM does have buyback. Yeah, yeah, I know, but if they, what I'm saying is if they force it here... Uh, oh, okay, they've got repair right. kit. Never mind. Ah, so they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. It's as simple as that. Ooh. That's a big jump. When you're Oh, hook shot? Nope. Onto the illusions. Now they've got the Sinister Gaze as well as the damage onto Victoria. He just bought back, so he's gone. If he does eventually fall here, and Victoria will be gone for 108 seconds, they get the kill on James. A pistol forward, but. Well, of course, the buyback on the Skyrath Mage. They're continuing to go on the tier threes. Dude, I don't know why that clock went in when he has no buyback. Like, yeah, he just bought back just crazy. to Hookshot and die. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle barracks. That's at least one set of X they rip through these buildings. Yeah, there's no repair kit on this one either. Do they commit? Waning Rift, Illusorio are back with the phase shift, so he'll jump back. Is it divine? Oh, Jesus! Ami, oh, mean, what are you saving up for? Christmas? <laughs> It's 20,000 gold! To buy an axe upgrade! Like, do something! You have 13,000 surplus! Go on a shopping spree! They form forward comes going the in. Fissure comes through, but I'm able to avoid it. The epicenter comes flying through. There's oh, what a the coil! Blade. The dream coil comes out. Yuris! So we're gonna get this kill, but they can't find it on SRF just yet. Finally, finish him off. DY's the one who gets credit for Yang a little bit too far. The Dagon as well as the Astral Staff. He silenced Yang in this. Is he really gonna get out? But his Simulink finishes him off. 
just in time. They'll buy back oh, on fan. Yang, but now worry was in a little bit of trouble to get the Kona XM. They'll take him out. He buys back immediately. Ami trying to do what he can. Finally, DY low. Astral step forward. XM gets credit for the kill, and they look over at XM as he jumps forward to get the kill on him. Echo swim for PYW. That lands on the two of these heroes, and the two heroes that remain. Ami trying to man fight against PYW. The damage coming in from yours, and the rest of the team is too much for him to handle. The Yule from Ori on the more fling. They'll get the kill with the Abyssal Blade. They'll take him out. He'll buy back immediately. And the tier four is Victoria with the hook shot forward. They get the kill to PYW. Oh, now with silence on the both these heroes as well as the leash out on Ame. He's trying to man fight. What can he do? Nothing. He can't do anything. He didn't buy anything with all that gold. He's losing the game with 15k. I don't know what you're doing. But GG is called and Vici will take game one. Oh, my game crushed. Um, I mean, that was, that was insane. Like... I don't think I've ever seen so much surplus at the end of a game before. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But to be fair, now for game two, he's actually going to start a massive advantage because he's going to have <laughs> 15,000 net worth over everybody else. Oh, my God. I mean, but like he, I, I don't know. I just, it makes no sense. Uh, to be honest, I think Yang ended up being the hero that like changes that game. Like,